Studio 6 Welcome to Think, Design, Provoke, the podcast. An intimate space where every week you receive inspiration about the fascinating world of interior design and all the benefits and effects in your lifestyle. My name is Francesca, and we will create meaningful conversations to unveil the enigmatic perception of interior design as a discipline that simply focuses on aesthetics. We will expose everything from interiors to its relationship to architecture, surroundings, history, and culture. We will challenge the misconception of interior spaces confined in architectural boundaries. We will understand that interior spaces provide the setting for human activity and are created to fulfill human desires and needs where sensory pleasures and engagement are celebrated. That is the built environment, the connection between individuals, physical spaces, experience, emotions, and its social consequences. I am your host, and I invite you to join the design conversations that will elevate your consciousness about interiors. Consciousness that will embrace the beautiful possibilities of manifesting all your senses in your space. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to episode one of Think, Design, Provoke, the podcast. It is a pleasure to be conversing with you today in our first episode of this new podcast journey. And I want to start giving thanks for all your messages, comments, and support this last week. It really means the world to me. I take this new role as an author, producer, and host of this show with so much responsibility. And I am excited to provide you with valuable content every week. So thank you for tuning in with me to create this intimate space between us. This podcast is presented by Studio Chess Interior Architecture Design Studio. On this first episode, we are going to converse about functionality. Does function matter? Why is functionality important in interior design? We could chat about functional lighting, or about the function of color, or functionality in furnishings, or about functionality of materiality selection. But today, let's focus on the function of spatial relationships. Let's dive in to discover the answers for these important questions. Functionality refers to the usability and efficiency of a space. It helps the users meet their goals and needs. It is essential to consider how people will interact with their environment in a comfortable and efficient manner. A functional space is one that is planned to meet the needs of its occupants. This means that it's tailored to the way that people live, work, and play. Think about all the spaces that you live, work, and play in. Your home, your workplace, the school that your children attend, your favorite restaurant, the smoothie shop, the bank, the hospital, or the hotel you stay when vacationing, just to mention a few. All these spaces are organized in a way that makes it easy to move around and use. The configuration of a floor plan is key and one of the most basic conceptual ideas for interior design and architecture. To have a successful configuration, it is imperative to understand the programmatic needs of the project. With programmatic needs, I refer to the space requirements that determine the use of the different areas. There are many ways to create plan arrangements, from open plan, to linear, to centralized, among many others. Today, I am going to chat with you about three basic ways to analyze space relationships and function. Let's start with adjacent spaces. These refer to the proximity between rooms or spaces within a building. It focuses on how rooms are arranged and interconnected in a floor plan. These are the most common type of interior relationships in which each space has its own use and functional requirements and is separated by a partition or other construction element that may range from a solid wall to a change of level, a featured wall, or a furniture piece that separates the areas. Let me give you an example. In a home setting, a kitchen is placed adjacent to the dining area to ease the movement of food. 
easy to visualize, right? Can you imagine if you need to walk through a long corridor where private rooms are located to get from the kitchen to the dining room? Do you feel it is correct to move food through the private rooms from point A to point B? That doesn't seem right, huh? That is why the use and the proximity of spaces relates to its organization in plan to support its proper function. Let's continue with spaces sharing a common space. These retain their unique identity and are linked with a third space that has its own identity. The common space can be larger or smaller than the spaces sharing it, but the common space has its own protagonism. Here is an example. A hotel with its different room types built around a courtyard represents this spatial relationship. Easy to understand, right? What about a space within another space? This is created when a clearly identifiable space or room is placed as an object within a larger open space. Example, think about an office setting. A totally enclosed conference room can be placed in an open plan office space. That conference room provides the privacy needed to perform meetings and presentations without disrupting the functionality of the open space around it. That same space could be the office for the CEO of an organization. A space within a space can be used to solve functional requirements or can be used to signify status or hierarchy. To support all these spatial relationships and to give you history context, the term function over form comes from the architectural principle form follows function. You have probably heard this before, but if not, This is a famous quote from an American architect icon and father of modernism, Louis Sullivan, which means that the shape of the building should primarily relate to its intended function. In other words, the purpose of a building should be the starting point for its design. Let me take you down memory lane for a minute. I visited Farnsworth House in Plano, Illinois almost a decade ago. This gem of modern architecture was designed by another icon of modern architecture, Mies van der Rohe. This space is another perfect example of a space within another space. The interior appears to be a single open room with a wood core space that contains private areas like toilet, wardrobe cabinet, mechanical room, and then on the other side of the wood core, it has a kitchen and a fireplace block. It seems to be a separated house nested within the larger glass house. The building is essentially one large room filled with freestanding elements that provide very, very subtle differentiation within an open space. All the zones for all activities that any user can perform in a home, like sleeping, cooking, dressing, eating, or sitting, are implied in the space, but not dictated. It is a space free of interior supports with flexibility to accommodate changing uses. This property also has a strong relationship with its environment. Mies decided to skip an access road and other urban elements to isolate the house from any other human intervention. One of my favorite, favorite, absolute favorite part of the experience was the entrance to get to the house. The entrance is like a natural labyrinth where all the trees become living walls along the way. The path of discovery through the journey creates this sense of like passive and serene movement that brings calm to the experience. Personally, I absolutely love the meandering and exploration and get myself like immersed in nature and then, wow, there she is. You know, I personally love that experience and definitely Mies created a very successful moment with Farnsworth House. If you haven't had the opportunity to visit this gem, please do. It is open to public through tour options. This house is the ultimate expression of minimalism. Certainly a must see. So, in interiors, function prioritizes how the space will be used over how it looks. 
I am not saying that the way a space looks is not important. What I'm saying is that function comes first. And after that is solved and accomplished, then we can focus on the aesthetics and the rest of the storytelling which that space will entail. The answer is yes, function matters. Functionality should be the foundation of any interior design project. After all, what good is a visually stunning space if it fails to meet its intended purpose? When design is highly functional, it does what it's expected to do and does it well. It seamlessly integrates practicality and convenience, making everyday activities enjoyable and efficient. Don't forget this. Function creates value. And value creates a positive experience. If you feel identified and connected with this podcast, please join the Design Conversations and invite your friends and family to be part of our community. I will be here every Friday to chat with you about interesting topics within the fascinating interior design world. You cannot miss the next episode where I will talk with you about aesthetics and the relevance of its main principles in interior design. If there is a specific topic that you want me to discuss, or if you have any questions, please feel free to DM me through Instagram or Facebook. Also, you can send me an email at thinkdesignprovoke at gmail.com. Please follow me on my social media platforms at Studio Chess to continue the design conversation. In the episode notes, I am including the contact links for your reference. If you find value in this content, please share this episode in your social media or chats. And remember to leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite audio platform. Thank you for your attention and for being on the other side. It is my absolute pleasure to be here with you. Blessings your way and have a wonderful Thanksgiving with your loved ones. I'll chat with you next Friday. And remember, everything in the built environment is by design and you are part of it. Ciao, ciao.